Raise your hand and don't say anything. If you know this man. No. Seems like no one. Raise your hand, don't say anything if you know this man. Okay, one, two, three, four. And raise your hand if you know this man. You know you know where I'm going, you know it. Just to be sure, this is Ronald Wayne. This is Steve Wozniak, for those who don't know, and this is Steve Jobs. I think everybody knows Steve Jobs. Now, is there anyone who could tell me what these three names have in common? Two of them are Steve. Apple. Three of them. Oh yeah, Apple. yes, Steve. Yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> Both of the, 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 all of them, the three of them, are founding fathers of Apple. Today, I want to talk about Apple. Let me paint you a picture of how Apple was founded. So, you've heard of three names. Now, how these three men met? Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs had known each other long before they found Apple. They were friends from school and they were all, they were both uh, computer science geniuses. Steve Jobs met Ronald Wayne in a company which they both worked for. Um, Steve Jobs dropped college and then started working in the company. The company is called Atari and they, they made video games. Now, the reason why is Wayne so significant for the story is that he had said he had found few companies before he met Jobs. Unfortunately, he was unsuccessful. He lost a lot of money. And um, this is the reason why, why we will talk about him later. Now, this is the story of how these three met. How was Apple found? Wozniak was part of a kind of nerd club. And this nerd club had a meeting. And they introduced them to a microchip from Intel in that, in that uh, meeting. And this, this microchip from Intel back then would cost the same amount of money as was month salary. Long story short, Wozniak was super impressed by the, by the microchip, so he started drawing plans. He had a keyboard, he had a, he had a keyboard, he had a screen and that microchip. You press a keyboard, you press a key, the letter shows on that screen. Now back then this was a sorcery, because no one knew about technology. This was a new thing. He goes to Jobs, Jobs says, wow, this is cool, we should make money out of this. How do we make money out of this? Oh, we should make a company, we should set a company. How do we set a company? We don't know. Do we know anyone who knows how to set a company? Wayne is in the game. It was April 1976 when the three of them signed a contract and set Apple. Now, it was 40% uh, Jobs, 40% Wozniak, and 10% Wayne. If anything goes wrong between Jobs and Wozniak, Wayne gets to decide. The reason why you've never heard of Wayne is that he left the party. He left the party too early, 11 days after they signed the contract, because he was too scared of losing some more money. Now his, his, uh, the, the share he would own with 10% of, of Apple, it would be, it would be uh, he would get billions of dollars for it. But he left. He left too early. If you don't believe the story, I recommend you reading this book. I recommend you also to learn Czech language first, because it's in Czech. <laughs> now, one of the reasons why I am so passionate about Apple is that, as you can, you can, you can see, you can say from that story, Apple was not found with the idea of earning billions of dollars. Apple was found with an idea of love for technology, for innovation and design. This is why I'm so passionate about Apple. Now, what is Apple, what is Apple now? Here are a few articles. This one is from Guardian. It's five months old. And the article says that Apple becomes the first company worth $800 billion. Um, what is also significant, please read this part. I'm going to read it for you. 
which says that the company represents about 4% of the $21.7 trillion that make up the entire S&P 500 index. Then it's insane. If you see, there's 500 companies in that index, and there's 100% in 100%. So if you divide it, if you divide 500, if you divide 100 divided by 500, it's a 0 0.2. And these guys take up to 4%. It's 20%. It's 20 times the amount they should take. That, that is the average. Now this is my favorite. This article is from November 16, 2014. It's from Forbes and says, Apple is now worth more than the entire Russian stock market. You can read both of the articles. I cite the work at the end of the presentation. Let's talk about BMC for a second. Key partners are some software companies such as Cisco. What about some telecommunication companies such as Foxconn? AT&T or IBM and maybe some companies which help Apple making hardware Intel and Samsung Key activities of Apple the things that they make unlike Google or Philips Google makes only software and Philips makes only hardware Apple does both software and hardware Now key resources What does the company make it from? They of course need human resources for doing software. They need designers, they need programmers, but they also need materials to make the iPhone, right? Value proposition. Why you should buy products from this company and not from a different one? Quality. I think we, all of us in this room, can, can agree on the quality of Apple products. It is also design. I mean, this is heaven for me. If I, look at, if I look at the video where they present and when they introduce us to a new Apple product, I'm like, I want to buy this. This is beautiful. This is how I feel. What about some additional products? Apple Music? iTunes and the last thing that I would like to talk about more is lifestyle now how many of you in this room own an Apple item raise your hand all of you all of you you, you do yes. yeah hundred percent how many of you raise your hand if you own more than one item from Apple I mean iPad or uh, iPad and iPhone and stuff. Jackson, 100%, 100%. This is what I'm talking about. You hardly ever see a person with an Android iPhone, and a, I'm sorry, and a, with an Android phone and a MacBook or something different. You see what I'm talking about? I have an iPad, I have iMac, I have iPhone, and then I have Apple Watches. I want to, Apple does, does a lot of work to synchronize all these devices so you buy only products from them customer relationships product reliability an assistant attitude in the Apple stores sales channels now Apple relies a lot on its own sales channels which are the Apple stores where you can go and buy the new iPhone but you can also buy iPhones in Walmart or Best Buy. These are just the two biggest. I mean, you can buy you can buy Apple products in on many places. Customer segment: male and female is genderless. From 18 to 45 age. Um, Arden, does your father has anything from Apple? He does. How old is he? You see, it's out of it. Um, what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, for example, my grandmother, she's 70-something and she owns an iPad and she, she works with it every day. There are products which focus, it, which focus or aim on different uh, age groups, not only from 18 to 45. 
US and international, and mostly high earners. Now it will take me a little more time to explain the last two, but I'll try my best to introduce these to you. The cost structure of Apple. Apple is value driven and it's, it has fixed costs. Now what does value driven mean? It means that it's no low cost. But what does low cost mean? Um, low cost means that in the process of making a product, the, the company tries to make every single thing as cheap as possible. So you go and usually you transfer your, the making of the product into Asia or into China because there is cheap labor, right? You usually make uh, it, uh, the product from, from cheap materials. So it's cheap, but it's not that, that high quality. It's not that durable. Now, this is exactly what Apple is not. Apple is not low cost. Apple is value driven. Fixed costs. It means that Apple has Apple's costs are fixed. You can buy the new iPhone for the same price in November and in spring. And you can usually buy the new iPhone for the same price until a new iPhone comes. So then they lower their price. Revenue streams. There are two types of Apple. Uh, there are two types of revenue streams that Apple uses. It's a set sale and subscription fees. Um, now, Faye, where did you buy your jacket? Um, Montclair in Frankfurt. Okay. Did you go to the store? How, how did you buy it? With money. With money. Did you go? Did you go to the store and tell them I'm gonna sign a contract for five years? And after five years, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the jacket back. No. You did not, right? No. Did you say? For each year, I'm going to own the jacket, I'm going to pay you $10. What? No. You did not, right? You just no. paid the money and then you buy it. Then you bought it. Yeah. This is the asset sale. You go to the store, you buy the iPhone. That's it. It's yours. You don't have to pay anything else. This is the, the example of asset sale. Many companies use that. But there's also subscription fees. This is the example I say. For every month I own the jacket, I'm going to give you $10. So this is how additional products from Apple work. Apple Music or iTunes. You can, you can buy a monthly membership 